spoken alliance. It's not a secret. It's just it's not there. It's there, but it's not. Nobody's talking about it. Do you realize? I'll just give an example. Okay. If you needed more reasons to think that Columbus was a dick, okay, <laughs> let me add one to it. Okay? There's a difference between when we were kids and today. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But actually, I, I do have something mildly redeeming to offer about Columbus, if you have the time. Oh, yeah. I just want to... Okay. Okay. We'll start off with that. You want me to start off with that? What are you, how do you want to do it? No, you no, I'll do the dick part. Let's do the dick part, dick, the, dick part Okay, you. so on his third voyage... He's in, by the time of his third voyage, he had already planted enough Spanish flags that Spain had already begun to set up governments and infrastructures in these places that he had uh, um, found. Yeah, basically conquered. And so, so in one of the places, I was, it's in the book accurately, but I think it's Hispaniola, one of the, the island today. He has to get back, this is his third voyage, 1503 or 1504. He's got to get back to Spain. He doesn't have enough resources, not enough food for his crew. So he asks the natives, would you please give us some of your stock that you have collected from your farming? Now, this particular group of natives only makes exactly the amount of food they need to tie to the next crop. They don't have surplus. So they said, no, we don't have surplus, sorry. Columbus knew that one week hence, coincidentally, there was going to be a total lunar eclipse where the moon in its orbit around Earth enters Earth's shadow. The full moon enters Earth's shadow and disappears. And that, the geometry of that event, it's just a simple lunar eclipse, but the geometry is such that sunlight passes around Earth through Earth's atmosphere and takes on sunset colors that leach into Earth's shadow giving the moon, if you can see it at all, a deep red amber hue, almost the color of blood. Columbus said, and he knew about this because he had read the tables, the eclipse tables, all right? We had, we'd known enough about the solar system at the time to, we, we got that, okay? Actually, back then it was just the known world with Earth in the middle of the known universe. But that didn't matter. The rhythms of the universe were known. He says to the natives, if you do not give us food, my God, which is more powerful than your God, will make the moon disappear and it will turn blood red. That will happen in one week. You have one week to comply. Some of them were skeptical. What? You can't. What? Others said, shit, we got to do what this guy says. <laughs> Look at the ships they came in, their guns, their power, their, their culture. Look what they've got. Sure enough, right on cue, the moon begins to disappear. According to that, that is a famous woodcut. Um, you, oh, you got this? Oh, uh, some, those viewing the video of this? Yeah. Um, that is a famous woodcut, and notice the natives bowing to him, and he stands proudly because he knows the science. He knows the astronomy. He knew this. Mm. And so he invokes this to dominate people who are not yet scientifically literate. And within seconds of this beginning, they bring him all the resources he wants, and he gets – and I don't, we don't know what happened you know, back at the island, whether the people survived the winter – but Ooh. he got back to the island. Well, that that is one microcosm of, <laughs> of ways that the universe has been invoked in this. I'll give you another example. Los Alamos, one of the national labs. They today, as basically since their inception, are charged with tracking the nuclear arsenal of the United States. Our nuclear power, the, 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 the nukes that would go into nuclear weapons. They think about this. Do you realize they hire astrophysicists? I had colleagues working there. You know why? Because there's a room. There are two rooms. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying this, but basically there are two rooms adjacent to one another and a computer between the two of them, the most powerful computers in the world. And there is code running on those computers that calculates the energy yields of hydrogen fusion. That's exactly what an astrophysicist cares about when stars blow up. Okay, the sun is undergoing nuclear fusion right now, and that's how it's making energy. And when, the, when high mass stars die, they explode as supernova. This is a natural thing going on in the universe. On the other side, that's a classified room. They're calculating yields of hydrogen bombs. And they have lunch together. They compare notes. The government doesn't always have the best people, 
But if you hire some of the best people to do whatever it is they want, and their calculations happen to relate to a military project, there you have a two-way street in progress. Why do you think the Hubble telescope, the, 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 the mirror issues notwithstanding, which were ultimately fixed when it was first launched, why was that so successful? There were versions of the Hubble telescope previously launched by the military looking down. That, that, the model for that telescope had already been conceived and built and was operating. Then we said, oh, we want one of those. Okay, but we don't, that's not public that this is going on. We design, the telescope gets designed. It has the benefit of previous versions of it having been used successfully, but looking down, and we look up. This is the perennial two-way street of astronomy in the old days and in modern times, astrophysics. And the invention of the telescope you haven't said anything yet. Or you just, you, you're a good listener. I'll, should I keep, just keep talking? Or, or am I preventing you from interrupting? Don't worry. Keep okay. going. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Okay, fine. Galileo perfects the telescope. He learned that it had just been invented in the Netherlands. The, the Dutch were, were op, opticians, all right? So they invented the telescope and the microscope within a couple of years of one another. This transformed science. When did they invent the eyeglass, the reading glass? The reading glass, earlier than that, but I don't, I don't know when. The, the real advance was putting two lenses in line with one another. Sounds trivial in modern times, but that was a huge leap, conceptual leap in what you would accomplish. And in so doing, depending on how you curve them and how you grind them, grind the, the shape of those lenses, you would get a microscope or a telescope. And, and we're off to the races. That's basically the birth of modern science as we now think of it and, 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 and conduct it. Because you say to yourself, my senses, I don't trust them to be the full record of what's going on in front of me. You pull out a microscope, oh my gosh, Leeuwenhoek, he got a, a, the microscope guy, he, he got a, a, a drop of pond water, puts it under his microscope, just to think to do this. It's just water, why do you think that's something interesting to do? He said, I wonder. He was curious, he puts it under and sees Little, what he described as animacules, happily a swimming. Animacules. Animacules. These are like the amoebas and paramecia. And yeah. oh, oh, it is. Uh, and so he writes, he reports on this to, to the you know to scientific authorities, and they don't believe him. They say, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, von Leeuwenhoek, uh, we think you might have had too much gin before you wrote this letter. <laughs> Why would anyone believe this, that there's entire creatures, an entire universe of creatures thriving in a drop of pond water? And so the way science works is one report does not make it true. You need verification. They sent people to the Netherlands to verify his results. And there it was, the birth of microscopy. And then they looked at everything, cells. You know, you need vocabulary to describe what you're now seeing. Well, that was the, 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 the journey down small, then the journey went up big. And Galileo perfects the telescope. He looks up and says, whoa, I see craters, mountains, valleys on the moon. The sun has spots. Venus goes through phases. This became the corpus of evidence for Earth going around the sun in support of Copernicus's idea that Earth went around the sun. My point is, what was the second thing he did with his telescope? He telephoned, no, he didn't telephone. <laughs> he contacted the Doge of Venice, invited him to the clock tower, and said, look at what this instrument can do for you as we look out into the lagoon. You can identify a ship's intentions, friend or foe, by its flag 10 times farther away than you can with the unaided eye. Venice bought a boatload of these telescopes in the service of their military defense. And this was a source of money to Galileo. Now he could go look at the universe. This has been a two-way street ever since people have looked up. So, so this is, this is a, an accounting of that. This is, it's, and, and it, it, it goes on and on. The first x-ray machines for airports you're old enough to remember. Why were they put in? Because of hijackings to Cuba, basically. They, they were armed hijackings of airplanes of American carriers to Cuba. And Congress said, we got to do something about that. Oh, by the way, there's a company in Boston called American Science and Engineering that was building an X-ray detector small enough to put on a satellite to observe the universe in X-rays. 
And because no one had observed, we've used visible light, but not x-ray. That's a branch of the electromagnetic spectrum. We think if there are black holes out there, their region surrounding them will give us x-rays. It's a new window on the universe. And then they said, oh my gosh, there's a call for x-ray machines at airports. We've got the technology that we've perfected to put in a freaking satellite. So the technology for those ones you walk through at the airport initially came initially, out? Initially, yes. Wow. Yes, yes. There was a two-way street. There was, oh, my gosh, we need this for security. Oh, my God, we would, we were using it. Let's, let's, let's apply that technology to these detectors. Well, that's been a lot of the stuff with the space program, right? A lot of the stuff that they devised for use on the space station and some, many other technologies have trickled their way down.